Howdy, my name is Y. Stanley, and this is my first video presentation for the 2023 Early American History Online Dual Credit Class through Laterno. Today, I'm going to be talking about ancient Native American pottery. I have a shard which I believe is from the Mesa Verde area in southwestern Colorado. I wrote about it during my canvas presentation, but I'm going to go more into the general history of native pottery during, around that area during my presentation. Pottery like this originated from the indigenous people in the Four Corners area, which includes parts of Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah. There were several cultures in the areas, such as the Anasazi, the Pueblo, the Fremont, and others, each with their own unique methods for making pottery like this. They made vessels of different shapes or different colors depending on the area that it was made in. This allows for people today to tell what tribe or era that it came from. Since this is just a non-colored shard, it's hard to tell exactly when it came from, but we have some things that we can look at to roughly tell the origins of this shard. Since it's from Mesa Verde, I believe that it would, would have been made by the Pueblo people, who inhabited the area from roughly 600 AD to the end of the 13th century. First, let's talk about the history of pottery in the Four Corners area. Pottery has been found in the region that is estimated to have been made as far back as 200 AD. Up to this point, many cultures in the area had weaved and used baskets to hold the materials. It's debated whether pottery was created in the area or whether it was introduced from another culture, such as Mexico. It's believed that a majority of the Pueblo pottery was made locally, not imported or traded, since the clay that the pots are made out of are similar to the red soil that is common in the area. It's also believed that outside of just being used as a vessel, many pots were used for decoration and barter. While the patterns and types of pottery made changed over the years, the methods used to make them stayed generally the same. Clays and muds were dug up locally. Since the Pueblos did not have pottery wheels, they would coil up pottery until it had the shape they wanted, then smooth it out and coat it with a watered-down clay known as slip. Some materials like sand, broken pottery, and ash were added to the clay to add durability when fired. When the clay was fired by placing it into a trench filled with hot coals and large stones, which acted as a kiln. During firing, some pigments or slips may have been added to make the pottery colorful and smooth. The history of the Pueblos is divided into five periods, which were divided based on large cultural changes and developments based on archaeological records. During the Pueblo I period, which stretched from 750 to 900 AD, the pottery reflected the basket maker culture since pottery was new. A majority of pottery made during this time was gray and made strictly for utility, and a variety of materials were experimented with. Some red and some black and white forms were made during this time, but the paint tends to flake off pottery made during this period, so you won't see as many colorful pieces from this period. During the Pueblo II period, which stretched from 900 to 1150 AD, we begin to see that pottery tended to be made with a black and white coloring in a variety of similar patterns. Some pottery made during the time was red and orange, but these mainly became popular later. Most of the pottery made during this time tended to be more utilitarian, but we began to see a ver greater variety of tools such as ladles, pitchers, and different kinds of pots. We also began to see the inside of vases and jars were lined with a slip to hold water in better. In the Pueblo III period, from 1150 to 1350 AD, pottery was similar to the Pueblo II period, but we began to see the corrugation become more popular. This was done by pinching bands of clay around the pot to add thickness and durability. The use of pigments became more popular during this time also, and we began to see more color variety in clay wares. Pottery from this area can be identified for the corrugation, and if you're lucky enough to have paint on your sample, you could see a black, red, and orange geometric design, which is popular at the time. During the Pueblo IV period, which stretched from 1350 to 1600 AD, corrugated utilitarian pottery became less popular, and we began to see largely decorative pottery be made. While orange, red, and yellow pottery were the most common from this era, more paints and colors were made during this period, and there began to be more designs and symbols rather than just geometric patterns. Pots also began to be properly glazed during this period, which means that it was fired with high temperatures a second time with a lead-based pigment to add smooth coating and more durability. 
Finally, the Pueblo V period goes from 1600 to today. Early on, we see that many of the patterns and methods used in native pottery began to be influenced by Spanish culture. There was a lot of migration during this period, so we see that pottery is less concentrated to one area from this period. Interestingly, since the Spanish kept all the manure from their animals in one place, the Pueblo began to use dung instead of wood to fire their pottery. The use of traditional Pueblo methods and patterns is mainly used for artistic purposes today. All that being said, this leads me to believe that this shard is from the Pueblo II or the Pueblo III period. It's about a quarter inch thick, so it's not from the Pueblo I period where the pottery was thinner. It also displays the corrugation method, which was made in the second period and became more popular in the third period. While this shard is well worn and does not have any paint, we can get a pretty accurate guess as to when it was made. Pots of this style were likely used for cooking and food storage, as displayed by the smooth slip coating on the inside. It's interesting to think that some 1,000 years ago, someone made this piece of pottery to be used. If you look closely, you can barely see some fingerprints on the edges, which is really cool. I hope you all found this interesting. I enjoy researching this sort of stuff and finding when something was made. I'll put an interesting article in the description of this video, which goes even deeper down the rabbit hole of native pottery and gets into the area distribution and patterns found on this type of pottery. It also has pictures of the pottery methods and patterns that I mentioned in this video, so you should definitely check it out if you're interested. I hope this was interesting, and I look forward to continuing to work with y'all.